as you're giving, those who are equal, there is embracing, and those who are senior, there is offering respects, like that, from Balaram and from Krishna. There's, it's explained in one verse from the first canto in Srimad Bhagavatam, and that when Krishna went, went to Dwarka, um, he greeted seven types of people in seven different ways. Some he shook their hands, some he smiled at them, some he embraced, some he offered obeisances, some offered obeisances to him. So this is very important. In Western civilization, people have, uh, they just have a very loose type of interaction with each other. And really, they don't respect each other at all. There's no respect. And so the only type of, the only type of respect is there is that maybe there's some consideration of uh, a little bit of sensitivity to the other person's feelings. But there's no real respect and honor for anyone. And therefore, people, uh, parents don't respect, and children don't respect parents. And parents don't really give care to their children as they should give. And the bosses don't really care about their employees. Employees don't care about their bosses. Husbands and wives really don't care about each other. They're just trying to exploit each other for sense gratification. This is material life. And this is due to a lack of training. Vedic culture, which is a spiritual culture, gives some understanding that there must be an etiquette which is conducive to, an, to bringing out a loving relationship between people on different levels. And etiquette is the foundation of one's um, uh, character, really. Without etiquette, there is no real uh, uh, reciprocation for all of other living individuals. It becomes mundane. It becomes very impersonal. So here, Balaram is just showing that. So I wanted to bring out that point. The cowherd said, O oh Rama, are all our relatives doing well? And Rama, do you do all of you with your wives and children still remember us? It is our great fortune that sinful Kamsa has been killed and our dear relatives freed. It is also our good fortune that our relatives have killed and defeated their enemies and found complete security in great fortress. Subhadeva Goswami said, Honored to have personal audience of Lord Balaram, the young gopi smiled and asked him, Is Krishna, the darling, darling of the city woman, living happily? Does he remember his family members, especially his father and mother? Do you think he will ever come back even once to see his mother? And does mighty arm Krishna remember the service we always did for him? For Krishna's sake, O descendant of Dasaha, Dasarha, we abandon our fathers, mothers, brothers, husbands, children and sisters, even though these family relationships are difficult to give up. But now, O oh Lord, that same Krishna has suddenly abandoned us and gone away, breaking off all affectionate ties with us. Yet how could any woman fail to trust his promises? So at the same time, they're feeling separation, but they're kind of like chastising Krishna. They would become angry in love. How can intelligently intelligent city women possibly trust the words of one whose heart is so unsteady and who is so ungrateful? They must believe him because he speaks so wonderful and also because his beautiful smiling glances arouse their lust. So the gopis are saying, the city women are being fooled by Krishna's smiling and tricky words. Why bother talking about him, dear gopis? Please talk of something else. If he passes his time without us, then we shall simply pass our time without him. So now love becomes frustrated, so we say, okay, we don't need him. <laughs> While speaking these words, these words, the cowherd women remembered Lord Sari's young laughter, his pleasing conversations with them, his attractive glances, his style of walking, and his loving embraces. Thus they began to cry. The Supreme Lord Balaram, the attractive of all, being expert in all kinds of various concili conciliations, consoled the gopis by relaying to them the confidential messages Lord Krishna has sent with him. These messages deeply touched the gopis' heart. So now Balaram is giving Krishna's message. Lord Balaram, the personality of Godhead, resided there for two months of Madhu and Madhava, and during the nights he gave his cowherd girlfriends conjugal pleasure. In the company of numerous women, Lord Balaram enjoyed the garden of the Jamuna River. 
This garden was bathed in the rays of the full moon and caressed by breezes bearing the fragrance of night from the lotuses. Sent by the demigod Varuna, the divine Varuni liquor flowed from a tree hollow and made the entire forest even more fragrant with its sweet aroma. So Varuna sent his daughter, Varuni, in the form of, of honey. The wind carried, just like on Balaram's appearance day, what do we offer Balaram as part of this? Honey, or Varunic beverage. But what is Varuni anyway? There's some controversy, not the controversy, but there's some discussion of what actually is Varuni. Does anyone have anyone to Shankar? Sometimes they say it's some kind of um, liquor made from honey. In time of intoxicant, that is the, the essence of it is honey. And others just say it's honey. It's mentioned in two different ways. Maru, what is it called? Maru, Maru Parka? It says that the, the, the demigods drink, drink Maru Parka and also become intoxicated on this honey beverage. It's a honey beverage. It's called Maruni. We're not advocating any of you to try it because it's against the four principles. But for God, He can do it. No problem with God. The wind carried to Lord Brother of the fragrances that flood of that sweet liquor, and when he smelled it, he went to the tree. There he and his female companions drank. As the Gandharvan sang his glory, Lord Brother enjoyed with the brain circle of young women. He appeared just like the Indra's elephant, the lordly Ayurvata, enjoying the company of she elephants. So it goes on and on. So Balaram performed his pastimes. Thus for Balaram, all the nights passed like a single night as he endured joy in Vraj, his mind enchanted by the quiz of charm and beauty of the Vraj's young lady. So Balaram went and stayed there for two months, pacifying the residents of Vrindavan, and especially giving pleasure to the gopis of Vrindavan. But again, when he left, everything returned again to sadness. Any questions? So today we're celebrating the actual return of Balaram to Vrindavan. Comments? Discussions? Or anything? <laughs>